I'm Steve Advocatus with Car Junkies. If you've been watching this three-part series and watch part one and part two, welcome back. If you're here for the first time, no problem. All three parts of my documentary on the Triumph GT6 can be viewed in any order. Visit our website at carjunkies.wix.com forward slash carjunkies. There you'll find links to part one and part two of this series, as well as links to other Car Junkies film productions. In this third and final segment of the Triumph GT6, we'll take an even closer look. We'll cover model history, performance specs, swing axle, engine bay, show and tell, and some personal opinion and parting comments. Hey, I'm a car guy. Naturally, I have an opinion or two.
Let's review some design changes, performance specs, and other info across the three GT6 models. GT6 Mark I production ran from 1966 through 1968. It had a 0 to 60 time of 12 seconds, a top speed of 106 miles per hour, and fuel economy of around 20 miles per gallon. GT6 Mark II production ran from 1968 through 1970. Changes from the Mark I included the following. The rear suspension was re-engineered, incorporating lower wishbones and what were called Rotorflex driveshaft couplings. Slight engine mods raised output to 104 brake horsepower. It had a 0 to 60 time of 10 seconds and a top speed of 107 miles per hour. The front bumper was raised to comply with crash regulations along with a front end redesign. Side vents were added to the bonnet and rear pillars. The dashboard received a refresh. GT6 Mark III production ran from 1970 through 1973. Changes from the Mark II included the following. It had a 0 to 60 time of 10.1 seconds and a top speed of 112 miles per hour. Weight increased to 2,030 pounds. Fuel economy improved to 28 miles per gallon. Body changes included a cutoff rear end or a cam tail, recessed door handles, and a smoother front end. The rear suspension was again changed, eliminating the Rotoflex design and instead utilizing a modified traverse spring or a swing spring. One final note, later USA Mark III models incorporated a lower compression ratio to allow for the use of lower octane unleaded gas. One of the interesting and I feel aesthetic features of the Mark III is the cam tail design. I've heard that term before but never understood what it meant. A cam tail is a car body style that derived from research of the German aerodynamicist Wunderbald Kamm in the 1930s. The design called for a body with a smooth contour that continues to the tail that is abruptly cut off. Emulating a teardrop design, this shape reduces the drag of the vehicle. There are two design features of the GT6 I enjoy in particular. One of them is how the bonnet opens up. Let me demonstrate. There are two latches on either side of the bonnet. One simply undoes the latch. And it's a one-man operation to easily lift the bonnet, which stays open with a, an arm. Additionally, uh, you can sit on the right front tire or left front tire on the right side for uh, adjusting the carburetor or perhaps a change in the air cleaner and on the other side for changing spark plugs. Makes it quite simple. The second nice design feature I like about the GT6 is the fastback design and how the boot opens. The fastback design is both sporty and looks cool and being a Back, you have a fair amount of space to carry bulky and large items to transport from point A to point B. Pretty slick. Okay, I'm just going to take a little footage of the engine bay. So, straight inline six cylinder engine. These are the uh, twin Stromberg carburetors. This is the uh, air cleaner box assembly uh, that uh, pulls the air into the carbs. I installed a couple of hoses uh, to pull colder air from the front toward the radiator. Speaking of which, uh, this is a solid brass radiator. And one thing of note, uh, I unfortunately ended up uh, installing uh, stainless steel headers. Uh, the stock uh, cast iron headers uh, had cracked. Uh, this is not an uncommon occurrence as newer gasoline formulations tend to burn hotter and the cast iron between wear and tear in the hotter temperatures tends to crack as mine did. So um, I could not find a, uh, a, uh, uh, a used old one in good shape and ended up going with stainless steel headers. Um, don't have to worry about the stainless steel headers. Uh, they look great, sound great, and uh, work great in conjunction with the uh, dual sport exhaust I installed as well. So let's take a look around the other side. 
So here's a view from the other side. Uh, the spark plugs are <laughs> very easy access to the spark plugs. Uh, changing spark plugs on this car is literally five minutes. On some cars, it can be as much as, especially the uh, newer cars nowadays, it can be as much as three or four hours uh, having to take apart so many components and subassemblies. So one of the nice things about these older cars is that uh, they're really easy to work on. Um, not much else to look at on this side. Uh, this one, this is the mechanical fuel pump. Uh, it's an aftermarket unit as the original one I have, which is much nicer than this one. Uh, a seal failed and I was not able to uh, rectify the seal. Hopefully I will one day because the original stock one has a glass dome that shows the gas coming and going. It's actually pretty cool looking. I call it a, a Jules Verne uh, design. Um, these are the uh, master cylinders for the clutch and brake. Um, and otherwise, really, not much, not much to tell. A pretty, a pretty honest, straightforward engine configuration for what's going on a 50-year-old car. In part two, I mentioned a swing axle rear suspension. This was in a segment where I shed some light on a few common myths. Should you be talking with someone who is familiar with Triumph cars and its Spitfire or GT6 comes up in conversation, the rear suspension is sure to be mentioned. Let's aim a brighter light on a rear suspension to separate fact from fiction. There were three GT6 rear suspensions all of which were, in fact, an independent suspension design. The swing axle on a GT6 Mark I, the Rotoflex on a Mark II and early Mark III models, and the swing spring on the later model Mark III's. Some would rate the ride quality of each in the following order. First place, Rotoflex. However, there is a downside. The Rotoflex requires routine maintenance about every three years to replace the rubber donut components. Second place would be the swing spring, and third place the swing axle. The Spitfire had the tendency to break away during spirited cornering if the driver lifted off the throttle mid-corner. This handling limitation was exacerbated by the heavier and more powerful GT6. In some cases, the driver experienced the dreaded rear wheels jacking and tuck under. During hard cornering, body roll would cause the inside rear wheel to be pulled up and lose adhesion with the road surface. When this happened, the swing axle would have a tendency to retract, resulting in what is called wheel tuck. This would produce a severe positive camber position of the inside wheel. If direction is changed rapidly, as in slalom or hard right-left turn combinations, you have immediate and gross oversteer. Cases of severe wheel tuck are rare. This is why one only finds a few photos that capture it and the ones that get passed around. This supports the myth that the swing axle Spitfire and GT6s all do it and are unsafe. The Traverse swing spring was redesigned and incorporated in later Spitfire models and the GT6 Mark III to compensate for this tendency. This modification also called for a larger front anti-roll bar. Things I like about the Triumph GT6, the all synchro mesh gearbox. It has great visibility. It has a nice cockpit layout, the way the bonnet opens, and the hatchback design, which both looks cool and is practical. A few things about the GT6 I don't like. Oil leaks, not having overdrive, although it was available as an option. But the cabin does tend to get hot, and being a small car in the SUV jungle, it's easy not to be seen. So owning one in a bright color, mine happens to be saffron yellow, and installing an aftermarket exhaust, I have a dual stainless steel exhaust system, both adds to driving fun and safety.
I hope you've enjoyed this three-part documentary on the Triumph GT6. We're moving forward on a feature-length documentary celebrating car culture and our love of classic cars. So check back with us in the near future and share the experience with us. Just can't.